we're getting a ton of new Star Wars movies. Uh, we're getting them from all kinds of different directors. We, you know, we've got, um, you know, Colin Trevorrow, and we've got Gareth Edwards, and Ryan up until Johnson. now, yeah, and they're these dudes who have like their own, you know, directorial style. Uh, but Star Wars movies are, it seems like maybe they're just kind of going to be Star Wars movies. Yeah, so I think our big concern, and this has been an emotional roller coaster as Star Wars fans to watch the Han Solo thing, because um, that news hit, uh, you know, whenever it did a couple years ago, and immediately uh, you were in two camps. One was like, I'm on board, this is the best idea ever. Or the other was, I don't think they should make a Han Solo origin story. Then you started hearing about the people involved. You started realizing that it's going to happen no matter what. It's stupid to just say, I won't watch this. Because it's like 90 minutes of your yeah. life. And if you like Star Wars, you like Star Wars. And ideally, the people making it like Star Wars, right? right? But I think when we all went to go see The Force Awakens, there was this A, like, kind of sort of tremendous weight lifted off, off of us. That was, okay, Star Wars is back. It's safe right now. Um, it's a little paint by numbers, but they're doing a lot of cool ideas. They've introduced a lot of new, new characters. There's a baton, you know, mm -hmm. passing here. This is ha this is a generational. Reboot. Yeah, I mean, the first line of the movie is this should begin to make things right, yes. which I think is the most transparent. And I think that I think that Abrams really got that. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I mean, people are like the Force Awakens is derivative. <laughs> no, it, it is also kind of establishing that like this isn't you know this isn't going to jerk the wheel. This isn't going to go crazy. A lot of people uh, were kind of alienated by the prequels because they. They were simultaneously keeping things too close to home, but also shaking things up a lot and and sort of reinventing what the original trilogy sort of right. established. Which, uh, I mean, they're they're very different trilogies, and yes. they're both they're both like Lucas's baby, but he was in a very different spot between when those two were made. Mm -hmm. um, what they do have in common, though, is that they're experimental. They're totally trying new things, and they're they're kind of weird. Uh, I mean, the first Star Wars movie was made by a. It was made a, a, as an affront to the studio system. Like Lucas was kind of going rogue with that and how it got made, uh, and it, he continued that throughout the, the whole system. The fact that he was making movies out of Northern California instead of Hollywood was in itself like kind of being like kind of being a bad boy in terms right. of how people did things. Uh, and it was a bunch of like you know weird dudes kit bashing model kits and like lighting stuff on fire. At one point, they had a water slide going out of uh, Skywalker Ranch, and a bunch of dudes from Fox came by and they were like. Um, who are these bearded men water sliding out of our offices? And yeah, like, like what is happening yeah. here? I mean, they were shooting the the movie in 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 insane new ways that no one had ever seen before. This sort of mix between special effects and models and etching things on the like laser prints. Yeah, there was puppetry. There was men in weird wolf costumes and that, getting drunk at a bar. Yeah, and that carries over to the prequels to a certain degree because at that point Lucas had all this money and he was willing to try all these crazy new things. Yeah. and he was like, hey, uh, episode two. Um, it's gonna be the first feature film entirely shot on digital. Also, half the stuff in it's not gonna be there, it's gonna be all green screen. And, I mean, it hasn't necessarily aged great, but, and some of the performances are weird because people weren't used to acting opposite things. But sure. that helped lay the groundwork for so much stuff. Like, I just watched Beauty and the Beast last night. If that had been made in 2003, it would be pretty much unwatchable. Mm -hmm. But the fact that all of the stuff that Lucas helped, you know, drive home with, with special effects and by experimenting, I mean, Star Wars has always been sort of a tech demo and kind of a test bed for strange new technologies. And I think they're still doing that to a certain degree behind the scenes, but in terms of taking a risk, it's still this like, you know, just cherished franchise, and they're, I think, scared of shaking it up too much. Yeah, and so when you and I walked out of The Force Awakens, we said that was a great time, we, we both cried in the theater, it was awesome, like, it was really cool, and then we both sort of settled in a little bit, saw it three or four more times mm -hmm. each, and said, now I can't wait for Star Wars to get weird. Like, they got the good stuff, the good sort of, like, boilerplate, uh, straightforward, make everybody happy, remind everyone that it's back, yeah. and it's not broken. And then we were like, we wanted to get weird. And then we started seeing, you know, um, some of the shots of some of the aliens in the background of Rogue One, and uh, some of the concept art, and some of the stuff we started hearing about some things in uh, Episode Eight, And it started to feel like, yeah, this is going to get weird again. And then Rogue One happened, and it was like, it's a fun movie, yeah. you know, it's not without I mean, its problems. It, it but. was definitely like staying in line with the style guide, which is fine. I mean, there is a Star Wars style guide. It's a little bit a little bit nebulous, and I think someone comes in and sort of adds something new that shakes things up a little bit. Uh, I hope that we get some strange stuff in episode eight that yeah. really kind of helps just push things in new directions. Uh, but yeah, and I mean, there was a point where things were kind of too off the rails, and I think, I think Lucas himself threw some stuff at the prequels that maybe were just either like, too goofy, too colorful. I mean, you got characters like Watto and Jar Jar that kind of like almost almost screw up the whole like the the ground. Like, where's the, like you got like a flying character and that never actually really plays a huge part, yep. you know? Yep. Um, but yeah, I want to see more stuff like that. But if you go and read like Dark Horse comics from the mid two thousands, they got like they went way overboard. There was some stuff in there that just didn't fit at all. 
And yeah, so I think that, that that's yeah. the big concern right now, right? It's like you get Lord and Miller to come in and make a weird Star Wars movie. Obviously, they're shooting differently than probably anyone's ever been used to with Star Wars because their 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 style is improv. Mm -hmm. They shoot. Seven seven versions of yeah. the same thing, and see to see what works. And maybe that doesn't work for Han Solo and Chewbacca. So yeah, right? that's what's worth noting. Is in addition to this being like this is not just a Lord and Miller movie. This is this is within a larger construct yeah. of everything else. This is Lord and Miller shooting a script that's written by Lawrence Kasdan, who yeah. wrote Empire and, and Force Awakens. Uh, the cinematographer is the guy who's worked with uh, Denis Villeneuve for uh, like Sicario and the new Blade Runner, who's got this incredible visual style. I don't know how that even translates to doing stuff. To improv? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking the same like, thing. Like you have yeah. this beautiful, hugely framed, like storyboarded shot, and then there's just like, you know, Donald Glover and, and Alden Ehrenreich goofing around in the foreground. Like, right, which is a little yeah. different than like shooting in a, you know, shooting in the back lot of a school uh, for 21 Jump Street and having Jonah Hill vamp on drugs for 25 yeah. minutes and, and picking the best take. Yeah, I, I think um, the, the coolest thing we could see with Star Wars to just sort of test the waters and go different directions is these movies, they're called anthologies, but they're not really anthologies, they're standalone motion pictures. I'd like to see an actual anthology movie that's a bunch of shorter pieces by different directors showing the different directions Star Wars could go. Yeah, yeah, and I really hope it can get that way because right now when we heard, we heard Rogue One was gonna be a war movie, and it mostly was in the back third of it, right? Mm -hmm. And we heard that Han Solo movie was gonna be sort of like a heist movie or like a buddy cop type of type of thing, and we don't know where that's gonna land either. So the, the promise was kind of, or maybe maybe we promised ourselves, that these spin-offs and side stories would sort of tell a, a version of Star Wars in a different genre than we're used to, rather than massive space opera. Mm -hmm. And yet it all seems to keep funneling back to that, which is good, which is fine, I love that, but I want it to get weird. I want, like, I, I think about the scene in Jabba's Palace, right, which is my favorite scene in all of Star Wars. It's 20 something minutes long, it's completely insane, and I don't think it would ever happen now. When we got, Ma you know, Maz Kanata's castle, it was like, a couple of minutes, and it was pretty straightforward. It was a vehicle for a couple of conversations between, you know, a bear and a sure. girl, and a like a, a yeah. Small, I mean, but those are all those one. are all various like kind of reinterpretations of the the, the original Cantina scene. Yes, exactly. Uh, I mean, what's the what's the equivalent of something like the Cantina scene? And I think like Lucas did that with the pod race. He yep. just threw this like he's like here's a, here's thing you haven't seen before. Really, yeah. it's kind of nuts. Um, so I don't know. I hope it, I hope it gets weird. Hope it gets strange. And I hope that uh, I, I hope that weird directors decide to come in and work with Star Wars. I yeah. hope that like they keep that open. Uh, that that conversation gets. I mean, I don't know what happened here, right? It, we've, this is unprecedented, to mm -hmm. be completely frank. Like we've never really seen on this level, not since something like Superman two, have we seen a directors of this caliber exit a project of this caliber this late in production mm -hmm. with three and a half weeks left in shooting and just a few months left in editing. So. We'll see if Ron Howard can come in, clean it up, keep it weird, keep it funny, um, and where Star Wars goes from here. Yeah. Uh, Modern Chow in the chat says, a la Animatrix, yes please. Maybe that's another option, is instead of just big uh, you know, live action feature films, is get a yep. bunch of like weird art students to make some, like Gendy Tartakovsky's Clone Wars micro series helped launch the Clone Wars cartoon, and that was beautiful. But yeah, get him to make a Boba Fett short, yeah. please. The love of God. That was our video about Han Solo, but now you want to watch more Star Wars, so here's our video about the best Star Wars viewing order. After that, you want to buy toys, so here's our 10 favorite Star Wars toys. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.